Welcome to another episode of Conversations. Today we have Ev. Hi, Ev. I'm so excited to see you. Hi, so am I. So okay, am I. so Ev is from Holistic Healing Astrology. I found her on TikTok and you just pulled me in. And what pulled me in was the fact that you like to teach astrology more so than just get on and spill out um, all the, all the stuff that you see, you can see anywhere. So I wrote down a question cause I want to make sure I get this answered. Does every astrologer read things differently or are the meanings universal? That, is, yeah. So some, uh, groups of astrologers, um, and they have different traditions. So the Vedic astrologers, um, which is Indian astrology, will have like a core uh, set of meanings for their interpretation. And then we have the ancient um, astrologers, and there's been a lot of new manuscripts found from the past uh, 6,000 years BC. They found new uh, wow. uh, definitions and stuff. And then uh, we have uh, what's evolved here now in this area is called Western astrology. So the translation is very personal, very different. It's like when you go to a doctor, they have their own style, their own philosophy. So that's why you have to find uh, an astrologer that fits. Yeah. So what makes, that. <laughs> what makes one better than another? Like, uh, or not better, but it's just if it feels like it's more of a fit with personality. Yeah. Um. So when you have your astrology chart done, there has to be a conversation. You do not want an astrologer that's going to dictate to you what is going to happen and this is it. Now, some Vedic and some ancient astrology uh, philosophies are this is when you're going to die. This is when you're going to have a heart attack. Oh my God. But I don't prescribe to that. Uh, there's a lot of free will. And with the free will, that means the chart gives you the information, but you create your future. So the chart helps you create your future. So I'm there to tell you, these are the vibrational activations in your chart. And you could use it the way you want to do it because every planet, every sign, every aspect has, it's like a coin. There's a high vibration and a low vibration. And sometimes we start out in the middle and go to the high vibration. Sometimes we start out really low vibrationally, and then we're working towards the highest vibration. So all, um, all, planets you know have a shadowy side mm -hmm. yeah so you got to find someone that fits a good thing to do is uh look at their reviews and see what the individual people say um but it is preference the funny thing now it's not regulated i don't know if it will it will ever be regulated uh like medicine but you know there's good and bad in everything but be careful when someone does not allow you to speak, because um, as we'll demonstrate a little bit with your reading, mm -hmm. uh, you'll see that I'm going to ask you questions. I'll show you where I'm. That's why I love to do it with Zoom. I'll show you what I'm looking at mm -hmm. astrologically. And then I'll say, you know, what it means. And I'll pick like two or three key words, but sometimes they don't resonate. That's where it could get interesting because I'm finishing editing my book, uh, The Astrologer's Time Saver, and that's like over 2,500 words mm. to decode a chart. Wow. So one, yeah, one planet could have like 70 different keywords because what we're trying to do is verbalize that energy. How do you explain electricity like a hundred watts versus the right. two that's behind the stove or a lightning bolt. Yeah. Yeah. Like gosh. what a lightning bolt could do. Right. A lightning bolt hit the uh, earth, but then grounding. So I like to use nature, but that's what they did um, in the past. 
they they use nature you know that's why the words the words are kind of um they they relate to nature and astrology does have a lot to do with nature but we <laughs> because we're in the 20 or what 2024 21st century the words may not relate because they're always changing. We as humans are evolving. Yeah. And from what I've heard and talking to other astrologers that they're constantly learning, like you never stop learning about astrology. Is that because the planets are moving all the time? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. So that's the evolutionary thing. Number one, we're always learning. And a lot of my teachers, um, you know, from the 80s, 90s, you know, that period, they used to read astrology charts and written several books. Well, now they have their little pet projects and they study the planetary motions and what's a true node. And, uh, you know, don't use uh, the true node, use the local mean node. So we're, you know, we're always learning. And if, and if an astrologer is not always learning, they're probably not good. Yeah. You want to stay current. And so, um, before we get to actually my chart and what people can expect when they get a reading, people are talking, at least where I pay attention, are talking about Pluto as a collective. Is it something that we should be excited about? Is it something that we should be leery of with it going from Capricorn to Aquarius? Is it scary? Well, it can be. Um, it depends on how the activation is in your natal chart. That's why these, any kind of generalization uh, prediction, there's really no such thing as a prediction in astrology because what they're doing is they're guessing that the energy is going to materialize in a certain way. Uh, but even if we do have the precise measurements, and I will point that out, remind me to say, Ev, do a transit uh, within our window of looking at your chart so you can see what I'm talking about. Um, but Pluto, it, the energy itself, it was discovered uh, around the time when we dropped the atomic bomb. Oh, wow. Okay. So, and then the nature of the planet, frozen, you know, yeah. <laughs> big, it's, big, it goes with, it's associated with, or the ruler of, Scorpio, Scorpio is like a fixed water sign. And and I remember doing a workshop and we used to think of it like an ice cube because, you know, Pluto's cold way out there away from the sun. But he said, no, I disagree. See, this is why it's good to keep learning as an astrologer. He says, it's like a fire hose, fixed water. And then I started thinking, yeah, it's like Niagara Falls. It It's powerful water but it keeps it in the same spot oh so imagine that and if that that right now zero degrees aquarius if you're getting hit with the transit of pluto that means it's crossing over and activating any planet or any point in your chart you're probably feeling something so what does that mean what are the uh key words Big picture transformation. Well, why do you transform? What does it take for that caterpillar to become a butterfly? Well, you know, usually you got to lose something. So the caterpillar loses its identity and becomes a butterfly. Right. But the moral of the story is a butterfly is a much aesthetic, a more aesthetically pleasing than a caterpillar that just eats up all the green stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so um, it also, uh, I like to do visuals. So uh, it also is a time of loss. Sometimes it could actually represent death because a death is an ending, but an ending for a new beginning because that's how we transform. So that's one part of it, the, the, the energy part. The other bad part or the other part that is annoying is it takes a long time. So for Pluto to move through the whole sign of Aquarius, it's going to take 21 years. Right, right. And then and then the motion of the planet, it's like a pendulum. So all planets except for the sun and the moon, they go forward for a certain amount of time, 
they stay in neutral. We're going to make it like a car and then they go in reverse. And then before you could go in reverse, you have to be in neutral because you'll strip the gears, you know, and then you go <laughs> forward. So Pluto, because they're spinning, they're spinning, you know, they're going fast and all that. So, so Pluto goes uh, six months forward and then it stations. We call that station is goes in neutral. And whenever a planet goes in neutral, that's the most powerful time because okay. it, it's it's like a hurricane that just sits there or a tornado that's in one spot so that's when all that churning and stuff happens and it's very uncomfortable um unless you have your safety nets and you have people around you to co help you cope you know that's all we could do mm -hmm. um and sometimes people lose everything so you know, and where Pluto is in your chart will show me where you keep in reinventing yourself, like end of this. And someone that's had a lot of, let's say, professions, probably they have it in the 10th house because that is an area of life of profession. So um, so that's why when we some people don't know what time they were born and that way, you know, I could look and see and turn the wheel and say you were probably born at this time because based on the planets and what's activated here uh, in your certain areas of life, and it always fits. And then we click on to do like a little forecast to see what the weather's like. And I go, oh, um, are you gonna be moving soon? She goes, I just moved. I go, all right, we got the right time. I love that. <laughs> okay, so I wanna, I wanna find out about Pluto in my chart. Cause I think it's in my 10th, but I don't remember. Um, so yeah, if you want to, um, Ev said she could pull up my, we're going to screen share. She knows how to do that. I do not. <laughs> and we're going to see my, my, there it is. There I am. Yep. So I'm going to move this here because, uh, I'm going to try anyhow, if I can't hear <laughs> it. All right. Okay. So. I hope everyone could see. Um, so astrology quickly. And when you have a reading with me, right, um, we have a conversation. So I just show everybody, this is your wheel. This represents the sky, the moment that Dawn was born. And then I'll say, oh, this is kind of sensitive information. Oh, it's okay. I'm fine. I'm right. an open book. I don't care. <laughs> Yeah, May 26, 1971. Doesn't she look great? And she <laughs> born 611. Um, and that's with no filter. And that's <laughs> Omaha, Nebraska, where they have a lot of snow right now. That's right. And, uh, so so what an astrologer does is they read symbols and we try to articulate the symbols into meaningful discussions. Okay. Um, so that when I say, does that make sense to you? I would hope that you tell me, yes, that makes sense. Or, uh, <laughs> because I'm trying to pick one or two or three out of the 70 something keywords for that little area. Okay. Right. Right. So, so much information. Okay. Yeah. So what I see here is, um, well, here's Pluto guys right down here and it's in her fourth house, which has to do with, um, her home life and family. All right. Okay. In Virgo and Virgo is an earth sign and it's mutable. And, you know, Virgo means they like to serve and things like that. So, um, you know, one of the questions I would ask her later would be something like, did you move around a lot or did you have different homes or was there a lot of loss in the home? You know, little questions like that. But the other thing I see here is, um, we have, uh, the ascendant. So the ascendant is, if you were to look east on the horizon, the, the moment you were born, the sign of Gemini was in 28 degrees. That's your ascendant. So that means that's a mask that Dawn wears. We all see Dawn as a Gemini, which is a curious person, a chatty person. <laughs> um, we see, we see her like that. Um, but if you look up here, uh, the sun, which is where she shines and what her focus is on, what she's probably really good at and what she wants to do in this life is 
be a Gemini. So again, that's air, intellectual, curious, um, and they like to communicate, great communicators. No wonder she has a podcast. <laughs> so she kind of is, you know, what she, she is, what she, um, she shows what she is. Um, so that's that. But the position of the sun also has a lot to do with the expression of the energy of that planet, the sun because it's in the 12th house, which is the last house. If you really wanna get a good feeling of that house, what it means, it means the mysterious, the hidden, um, fantasy land, supernatural, the closest place to God. But remember, this is your birth year, right? So this is before your birth. And before your birth, you were in mom's womb. Right. Or in a test tube, <laughs> whatever, they're gonna <laughs> lay your so, so the thing is, we're you're hidden. We know there's a little there's a little dawn percolating and growing and all that stuff that goes on, but we really don't know who dawn is yet because we haven't seen her. It's like the big reveal we're waiting for, and that happens right here, 28 degrees Gemini. So, so that means that dawn likes to be alone, or she likes to sleep, <laughs> or she needs her isolation time. You know, and then I would ask, Dawn, is any of this true? Well, I never thought of myself like that, but I think it is true because I, well, I do love to sleep. Everybody knows that, but I, um, okay, I never thought that I liked being alone until I really had a lot of alone time. And I really do like my own company. I really do like just being by myself. I don't, I love having friends and family around, but. I do enjoy my alone time. Yeah. Yeah. Because that's where the, sh the sun is shining. That's so, so that's, that's probably where you could get all this, um, you know, enlightenment, you know, your ideas and stuff like that. You need a little bit of alone time to, you know, to let it happen, to be inspired and all that good stuff. Right. Uh, that's the way I would look at it. Mm -hmm. But then uh, this is a great chart to look at you guys, because We've got conjunctions, which is a technical term. That means that uh, planets are grouped together. So they work together like a, a diatom or, you know, two oxygen molecules. They always go together. You can't split them. So um, that's what we have here with uh, Saturn, responsibility, uh, constriction. And it could be a little negative or, you know, like seeing you know, seeing the reality of it, um, and being, being hardworking and making commitments and, and things like that. It's also kind of heavy, but it depends. It's different for everybody. Mm -hmm. But if you look here, Saturn is, uh, in a sign of Taurus, which has to do with possessions, money, love, like the physical love. And then, but then the sun is in a completely different, even though they're next door to each other, it's in another sign. So now we got a, a little bit of, um, you know, different energies working together. They're like four different energies all working together. So that would be a discussion that we would have. How do you feel about duties and responsibilities and, um, you know, hard work? I'm sure people would say you're a hard worker. Uh Are you I would hope so. <laughs> I would hope so. Yeah. So, so that's one thing. All right. Mm -hmm. But the Saturn is in the area of friends, hopes and wishes. So, you know, you could put a lot of effort in for uh, helping people out, you know, mm -hmm. uh, because they're friends, right? Helping friends out. So that's one thing. Um, now the other, the other group is over here here and it's mercury which is the ruler of gemini and so now the chart will echo you know when you ring a bell it goes boom, boom, boom you know so that's that theme so the theme for you is communication because your son's here your ascendant is here that's a very strong point and i didn't forget the moon because that's another very strong area in your chart but i'm kind of going all over the place and I've been criticized for that, but I wanted to point out the guys that work that are working together in pairs. 
But these two guys, so this is communication and this is love. So you love to communicate or you that love to true. read or you love to teach, right? Yeah, all of that. Yep. And and you probably make money doing this because this has to do with money. It'd be nice to make money doing it. <laughs> right now I'm not, but yeah. Yeah. You have the potential because this is money that you earn from your own business in here, the 11th house. Okay. Um, and this is why we have a consultation because it's like, well, then you would tell me, um, yeah, I make some money, but I would like to have this kind of income from this. How would that happen? Uh, but this really is not so much connected. This area here is not so much connected with your profession. Okay. Because your profession area is here. But in that area, there's a the healing planet. So, you know, maybe healing people is part of it. <laughs> these are just clues. They're just yeah. clues. But what happens is when I share these clues with my client, that the wheels start turning and then they they start realizing things that sometimes they never told anybody else. Right. And they go, I always wanted to do this. And I go, well, why don't, why didn't you do it? And then I find out all the obstacles. This is also obstacles. The Saturn over here is also obstacles and blocks. And it could be with money. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So then, I, so if you confirm that, because I'm not going to ask any private stuff now, <laughs> I would look at, I would look at right here, this, you know, this line and that's a need to balance but you're very lucky in your very much of service very spiritual because here's another pair but these guys are like on top of one another this is called partile super close this means abundance this means joy this means good luck and it's in the area of service health wellness um and then neptune has to do with uh escape Med meditation fantasy land drugs alcohol the deep blue sea um anything like that fantasy it's uh it's the ruler of pisces and at the top of your chart is your profession pisces but see how it goes over here you know it just it travels around so it's weaving this little story about dawn's potential it's mm. all potentials that's so um, interesting. Mm -hmm. So the blue lines are uh, pretty much the flow, but then you have a little bit of um, urgencies and or and or uh, obsessions, you know, um, you know, and I have one guy, he had like five or six of these. And I go, well, this suggests obsession. I said, you know, what do you think? He goes, that's my middle name. And I go, oh, OK, so because <laughs> I don't want to say anything negative or mean, you know. So right. um, now, um, so we're getting to Pluto, but before we go there, I want to look at the moon. So the moon, anything is zero degrees or 28, 29 degrees, they're critical. So zero means that it's a new beginning. So emotion, you could be very emotional, um, according to the chart, like, and you show your emotions or that you're sensitive and you're very nurturing because the moon is ruled by cancer, but yet um, it's in it, it's in its own um, sign. So that means it's stronger. And then it's really strong because it's right here on the ascendant. Hmm. So, um, so when would you be emotional? Well, when it has to do with home and family, you're a nurturer and you care. This is a good making for nurses or anybody that deals with people, helping people, doctors and things like that. Um, but up here, you're selfless. So your profession is almost like selfless. That's the Pisces profession place. This here, Neptune, is also selfless and charity. You know, this means charity, too. So that's why I have no money. <laughs> That's where know, that no money comes into play. <laughs> if Wayne Dyer, remember Wayne Dyer, he gave it all away and he couldn't give it all away because as he was giving it away, it was coming in the back end. Oh and my gosh. Kind of the point. 
so funny. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So um so here's your moon and um so we would look here and say this is very strong and then um but it looks like it serves you pretty well um you just have to work at uh watching the emotions because it looks like it goes here to pluto so this is very emotional not mm -hmm. very rational because <laughs> it's emotions but, but you're very rational up here and who you are so that's your saving grace otherwise you <laughs> I ain't all the time. Yeah, it'd be I, a hot and, mess. <laughs> I mean, you know, the, but you made the chart. Remember, these charts were made by you before you came to this earth plane. It's a contract. Yeah. You know, between you and whoever the higher source is, your soul, whatever you want to call it. Right. So this Two, we have another dynamic duo over here, uh, outer planet Uranus, which has to do with a lightning bolt type energy. But it's also if people channel or they're very quick, they're they got great ideas. And when it comes to relationships, uh, or it could be lots of changes, sudden changes, um, the future, like being alone. Um, no, not alone, free, freedom. And then you might get a little grouchy if, you know, uh, unexpected stuff happens in the home, especially mm -hmm. with rela relationships. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Okay. So we're done with that. And now dun, 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 Pluto. So here's <laughs> Pluto. Pluto is in her fourth house. So I'm going to demonstrate the aspects. What is an aspect? An aspect is when um, it's a connection. All these lines here. These are all aspects. So what they do is they show the astrologer that Pluto is connected with your greatest joy, success, and prosperity is caring for people. That's the money. And it's also in the money house. Hmm. So that's called the part of fortune, but it's in cancer. So you love, not you love, yeah, your greatest joy, success, prosperity, that's kind of like a big factor in uh, your chart. And I didn't look at your midpoint because we're, we don't have enough time. Yeah. Uh, a reading will take a complete reading will take, um, 90 minutes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Cause there's a lot to cover. I mean, even what you've already done has seemed like so much in a good way, but yeah. when you look at the chart, there's so many other things going on. It's crazy. 4,000 plus bits of data in this chart. So, um, yeah. So I have to really look and see what does the client want to talk about and what's most important. Um, I mean, you could pay anywhere from 180 to a thousand dollars for this kind of a reading. Um, so that's why I'm revamping the website and I'm having some issues with it because we have development issues, right? Not a problem. However, so here's your Pluto. So, so it goes here, you know, uh, opportunities right here to make money with this transformative Pluto energy, which also has a vibe like psychology, psychological, or doing stuff in the home with either food, uh, food, animals, or uh, herbs. And uh, what do you call that? Um, uh, oh, 30 minutes is up. 30 minutes is up. I looked at the thing, see? So um, yeah, I'm going to slow it down. But that's that's what Pluto uh, does. And it's in the Virgo sign in the fourth house. So um, all these different lines will say, you know, maybe you have an obsession with healing people right here. And you might do something that's very different, pioneering, hmm. that transforms because you have this urge. And then if you wanted to talk more about Pluto, we look at all these lines and then, you know, you might come on a little strong when it comes out, you know, or maybe you have a great impact because of Mars uh, in Aquarius, which has to do with um, technology and things like that. Hmm. So, you know, I would say, and you're working from the home, you know, 
Um, well, technically, um, I'm not. Podcasting is just a fun hobby. So well, I don't work in the here. house. Yeah, for the healing, for the healing. Okay. So if this podcast stuff is healing people, because there is a connection with the healing to this communication, money, and all that, it, like in a social setting right here. Okay. You see? Mm -hmm. so, um, but we'll connect later. And then, so you want to see where Pluto is right now in your chart. So this is kind of scrunched up. This is called the bi wheel. And so Pluto right now is um, right here. So I don't see anything major in your chart except for that zero, uh, but that you're safe there. Uh, you're safe here. We would look at anything <laughs> fixed zero degrees. So I don't see anything off the bat that uh, Pluto's gonna be hitting, but we do have to check these uh these little areas here the cusps the edges of the signs and um and that looks good too so <laughs> yeah um but you know no one's exempt so so that's that's a good thing for um for you because that would be long term right then, and it's going on for isn't it I mean, like till 2043 or something that Pluto's going to yeah. be in Aquarius. But in, in about uh, maybe six or seven years, um, six or seven years, you would get a contact to, um, to Mars, you know, where you, you might just change all your energy and do something else when it comes to either technology um, or something in that respect and then it would hit this so this guy is moving pluto's moving this way and it's going to trek over here all along here for the next 21 years but when it makes contact to this and that and um and then um squaring so and anything around here but but it does make contact and that's what the astrologers will look at. Mm -hmm. So, and then for so, if you wanted to do prediction set, uh, session, then we go into uh, here. We edit it, and then we will look at other charts. Your solar return, but it looks like you have a Chiron uh, that just returned. So there's been like a healing for you, uh, maybe a little while ago. So we would look at that. Anything mm -hmm. that connects again because that's slower moving um and right now there might be some restrictions or more responsibilities with your uh profession because saturn is up here or your hard work is paying off that'd be nice <laughs> so gosh so that's uh that's a quickie here <laughs> wow that's so Any much questions and do you want oh. me to take the screen off? Sure. Yeah. I want to see your face again up close. Oh, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> what got you into all this? Well, I don't know. Ever since I went to the library and I stumbled into that 133 section with astrology, I was hooked. So maybe in a past life, I was an astrologer or something like that. But um, so you're talking over 55 years, I've been studying astrology. Um, multiple times i try to do businesses with it um but the timing factor didn't didn't always gel but um and then it's still illegal you know in a lot of states you have oh to say, my gosh i did not know that yeah you have to say it's entertainment purposes dawn whoa and then you said too that you can channel so when did you learn that you were able to channel well that was really weird too because when i was growing up you know, I would just say things, boom, I'd say things. It's a knowingness. That's uh, a lot of uh, Aquarius type energy too, which is interesting uh, about Pluto going into Aquarius. So I think we're all going to um, develop a lot of mental telepathy and mm -hmm. things like that because it's air. So it's like you have this knowingness. And I would say to my mother or just blurt out this stuff and then I'd get in trouble. Because <laughs> they'd say, hey, don't say that. Like you don't have proof. 
Of course, I never <laughs> had proof, but these things would just come out of my mouth. Then, you know, little by little, I started realizing, you know, uh, psychic readers would tell me I, I, I had the gift and this and that. But when I started reading professionally as an astrologer, people would say, can you do this? Can you do that? And I go, yeah, I guess, you know, and that, and so the more I was doing the astrology, it's like a muscle when you lift weights, the more you practice it, the more it develops. And then I realized I was psychic and had mediumship uh, qualities all my life. I didn't see the dead, but it was like they were in my head type, like, these inspirations and these ideas, it didn't come from me. And now that I'm doing readings uh, with some people that want to connect with the loved one or the loved one wants to connect with them, my lamp will go like, and I go, uh oh, um, yeah, they're very subtle signs. So I teach that um, to people that have abilities or, or they think they have abilities. So I train them like how to use cards and um, use the metaphysical tools. But I was always fascinated with it and I was always right. <laughs> and then I got scared and I thought, maybe I'm making it happen because I didn't want bad stuff to be coming from me. Right. So there's a lot of like challenges and even with the church, I, I remember, you know, because I was very active in the church. And I made up my mind and I told my brother, yeah, I'm going to do, I'm doing astrology. This is the name. And he says to me, he goes, you're going to ruin your reputation. And I, oh, that cut me. It was like, oh. oh. So then, because I really wanted his, his blessing, let's say. Yeah. And I looked up, I just, I sat in my chair and I looked up and I go, I know you're testing me. I knew that God was testing me. So I said, because I know my theology and I, I, you know, there's a lot of stuff missing from theology that, that, that they took out for control in my belief. So, um, but I think we could work all this stuff together because there were prophets in the Bible all the time, you know, right. It right. Says, you know, Jesus says, ask and you shall receive. That's the law of attraction, all that stuff, quantum, the quantum world, all that it's been proven over and over now. So, you know, um, they, we, we have to just control ourselves. That's the message. The chart shows you how you could take a hold of your own chart, control yourself, whatever you can't control, let it go. And then create and carve out your, your little map, your roadmap. And that's your, that's your choosing. But if we listen and get confused to other people, you know, uh, and we get tested all the time. That's Saturn and Capricorn accomplishments. So we get tested, you know, like to block us to see, you know, are we really committed? And then you say, no, I'm doing this because that's in your heart. Yeah. You always know what the truth is. That's and a great always... message. I love that. And I think we all need to be really, we all need to be more open-minded to all the possibilities, like you said, as far as religion goes and, you know, stop with the labels, you know, don't call it law of attraction if that doesn't feel right or resonate with you, but realize that if you speak it out and believe it in your heart and it's for good and it comes to you, then it was meant to be, that's the law of attraction, but you don't have to call it that if you feel like that's woo woo or whatever. Yeah. I think we all just need to be a little bit more open-minded with that stuff. The other very critical thing is like priests and anyone, doctors and things like that, because of my theological uh, learnings and research, because whenever we deal with people, we are judged at a higher level. Okay. So it's very important that I don't steer someone in the bad direction. There are people in town here um, that say you have, a, they have a curse and they go, well, for so much money, I'll take the curse off. That is really bad karma. And so you want to steer away from people like that. Uh, I have a huge ritual that I do to keep myself in love and light, you know, um, by burning my frankincense, uh, putting holy oil on, you know, and keeping my space clear because 
all these invisible energies, they could attach to us. If you go to a bar, you could get all these little attachments. That's why I don't like to read when there's alcohol involved because it's, it's just not, it's, I'm not taking that kind of risk because I'll be scrubbing and cleaning <laughs> for a long time. <laughs> Happen. So what's next for you, Ev? What do you got? You said, did you say you have a book coming out or? Well, um, I would have posted it on my website, but I don't want them to be stressing with any more buttons and stuff. They're like overwhelmed, but I do have three books. Uh, two are ready soon and they're in different formats. One is like a little pamphlet. It's really small, but it's called Astro Power five reasons why millennials love astrology. So that's good for people that really don't know what astrology could do. It breaks it down. Oh, that's the great. One, the other one, because I meditate every day and I journal. And, you know, that's where I connect with God, right? Mm -hmm. And I tell my clients, you know, because I coach and I do all this other stuff. And he, he says to me, the next book you got to do, and you're going to do it quickly, is Guided by God, Journal. I go, okay. And whatever you've been doing, put that in the prompts and let it rip. So that one's done. And that could be a fillable PDF or uh, it'll be on sale to link to Amazon. Okay. And my big labor of love, it's taken me years, maybe 20 years, 30 years to accumulate all the keywords, 2,500 words. And I put it, what was I thinking? but I put it in a spreadsheet so I could make it in an alphabetical order. You talk about how anal was that, but I did it. And, um, and, and so, because there are a lot of words and I kept adding to it. So I got someone to help me, but it's taken a long time to format it so it could go up. And I'm now I'm doing the final editing. So that should be ready in another month to, um, as long as I don't have any more blocks, but there's always a block here and there. <laughs> yeah. I just kind of expect that. Um, and then where can people find you like on social could, media? Yeah. Social media, uh, TikTok, all the handles are holistic healing astrology. And, uh, you could always call to leave a text or whatever, 757-513-7771. 757-513-7771. But if you go on to the website, which is holistichealingastrology.com, then there are links to my YouTube channel because I do like to teach. Uh, and forgive me, forgive me because I didn't hire professionals to make it all fluffy and pretty and all that. That's coming. Uh, but the main thing is I want to get the word out there. And you know, it's the first time in history that anyone random could go on the internet and get their chart. This is yeah. the first time in history, but they don't know what to do with it. Right. It's true. And with AI, I'm sure there's more coming down the pike too. You know, just all the, it's crazy, but it's, it's interesting for sure. But anyway, Ev, thank you so much for taking the time. I loved hearing your take and thank you so much for looking at my chart. I didn't anticipate that you would do all of that. I feel like I owe you a some money. <laughs> but as you can see in my chart, I have no money. <laughs> you do have money. Now we got to change your thinking and what words you put out there because Pluto um, has wealth. Pluto is wealth and you could be making a, a tremendous wealth uh, in the home. The way I said, healing people with your great communication. That's how you're going to make a lot of money. Maybe you're going to write books. I mean, look how long it took me to, to produce a book, but now I got three coming out at once. That's awesome. That's and that's so been awesome. a dream. So, you know, you just, you're steering the wheel. <laughs> but if you say I have no money, then the wheel goes, eh, no money. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I got to retrain, retrain. Yeah. All right, Ev, thank you so much. It was so great to talk to you. And maybe I, we can have you come back and do another, another uh, delve into astrology as things start changing out. Sure. Yeah. Monthly forecasts are really fun. In the beginning of the month, people always want to hear. Um, I would, I would be honored to be your, uh, you know, what do they call that registered or resident, <laughs> resident astrologer. Yeah. 
uh, or psychic or whatever. We could pull a card for fun. Right. <laughs> um, but it's really interesting how the world works. Yeah. But I'm open to uh, spreading the word. And uh, I thank you again for your time and all your listeners. Uh, Dawn is an awesome person as far no. as, uh, no, she, you know, she does stuff because she cares. Um, and this is just, you know, her love thing. Uh, but I feel, I feel that uh, it's going to produce a lot of comfort for you and a lot of financial um, stability for you, what you're doing. This is just because when you're happy, you know, doing what you love, the money always comes. You know that. Yeah, that's great. What a way to end it. All right. Thanks so much, Ev. We'll see you later. Bye. Bye, Bye. My love.